Welcome. Uh, good afternoon. Integrated has been involved with our club as a corporate partner for the past 16 consecutive years and the last three years as a major sponsor of the club. Integrated is now known as Programmed Integrated Workforce and today we're pleased to announce that Programmed has extended its partnership of the club and it will be a major sponsor of the club for the next three years. I'd like to hand over to Chris Sutherland, the Managing Director of Program, to make a few comments. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, we're very proud of a long association with uh, Fremantle Football Club and very pleased today to be able to renew our sponsorship arrangement for the next three years. We're very confident about where this club is going and, in fact, where the whole competition is going with the expanded television rights and uh, we're certainly looking to uh, create value from this investment uh, for the next three years with the Fremantle Football Club. So uh, we're very proud. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. No worries. Cheers. Well, we certainly think that uh, they're a club that uh, can get uh, renewed success uh, over the next three years, but our investment is not just based on a single club success, it's based upon the success in the, whole, the competition and, and the, the entire AFL. It's a very professionally managed competition and certainly with the new television rights now we're very confident that we can uh, get a good uh, promotion of our brand across the uh, Australia wide. Uh, we do, and uh, we're associated with many, many sporting associations across Australia, uh, both uh, in junior competition level, state level, as well as national level. This is clearly our largest investment um, in the AFL, but uh, we're certainly uh, associated with many, many different sporting clubs across the country. Well, we're involved really for two reasons. One is, is that we do think the association with team sport and the values that team sport has fits well with our customers, where we try to partner with our customers, and also fits well with our staff, where we do try to make all our staff work close together. Equally, it's obviously, in the end, it's all about growing our business, and uh, we certainly have measures around... Uh, uh, gro growth of uh, revenue and business development opportunities, etc., that come out of our association with uh, Fremantle Football Club, as well as other things that we do. Well, we set ourselves to improve, and we think we've improved in a number of areas, but disappointed we're not going to play consecutive finals. If we can't get across the line against Collingwood this weekend, that's our challenge. Um, we uh, set ourselves up, and we're planning to be a regular finals continue, contender, and we may not get there this season. It's been hard to measure. We've had an unprecedented number of collision injuries and injuries overall, so... We've certainly been challenging our capacity and capability to put the best foot forward on the field to, to the 23 rounds to date, so it's probably pretty hard to measure at this point. Well, it's a challenging competition, and what we set ourselves up to do is to make sure that we're best prepared and planned to take on the competition, and that means looking at everything every year. So we'll continue to do that. Our business model's around continuous improvement, and that means looking at everything each and every year. Um, well, six years ago, exactly halfway through my career, I sort of have a had a 100,000k service, which was <laughs> was a, a sh shoulder reconstruction, uh, some groin surgery and also some, some minor knee surgery. And I like to think tomorrow morning it's just a little tune-up. I've, I've got a, a bit of a hip problem that I've carried for a number of years now, but sort of got to the point where uh, it's worthwhile dealing with. I know, it's more, it, as I said, it, it's been around and I guess grumbling along for a couple of years and I've been able to manage that quite well, but... Um, Given that I hurt my calf on Saturday night, it sort of presents a good opportunity to get in and have a quick, uh, a quick look at what's going on in there, um, fix up the, the little issue that's there and, and get ready for uh, later on the pre-season. No, it will not impact on the pre-season, given, especially given that uh, I'm able to do so um, as early as tomorrow. <laughs> well, I've got six. Six, six out of the last one, so I'll be very lucky to get half of that. Um, oh, look, you know, I think that's... Uh, that's the sixty-four thousand dollars question. How long I can, uh, you know, keep going? But really confident that uh, that this is, a, you know, a really minor thing that I have to deal with, um, along with some rest in the off season. I'll be perfectly right for day one of my pre season. No, it didn't. No, it didn't. No, not at all. Is it fair to say, Pav, that you'll be able to at least play out the the extent of this program to major sponsorship for the next? Well, that's years. right. It, it fits fits beautifully. The fact that uh, I've got three years to run on my contract and, and programmed integrated workforce have signed up for three years. So it's terrific news uh, for our club. Um, as I said, as I walked in the room and said good day to Chris and Jason before that, you know, we as players absolutely value these types of sponsorships and uh, we understand how important they are. So for it to be another. Uh, another three years is, is, is terrific and, and one that the players really love. Well, yeah, I guess um, it's incredibly disappointing for those players individually, but for us as a team not to have the continuity uh, each week to play the way that we'd like to have played. And, um, you know, that is an AFL season. Though. Injuries occur and injuries happen uh, week in, week out. So it's not as if 
Um, it's an excuse that we've ever offered up. It's something that we understood whoever pulled on the Fremantle jumper week in, week out. Um, we needed to play a certain brand of football and as uh, Steve alluded to, we haven't been able to probably do that often enough to be consistent and successful enough to, to play in the, the last month of the year. I think we still can, yeah. I mean, just because of the personnel changes um, that we'll have this weekend, there'll be guys who'll be coming into the side that may not have played a huge amount with us this year, who'll be de desperate to, I guess, show their wares against the best players in the competition and the, you know, the best team in the competition. So um, I think it's a terrific opportunity for our, for our group. Um, you know, a lot of people are talking about how difficult the challenge is going to be. And yeah, sure, we understand that it, it is uh, the hardest game that we'll probably play this year. But um, it does provide our players who, with a great opportunity to show their wares. Uh, look, uh, I don't know how they're going intimately, but in, in terms of their preparation for later in the year, I would have thought they would be fine-tuning everything. So uh, we're expecting a red-hot Collingwood, um, regardless of bringing players back or resting players for this weekend. Uh, look, um, you know, you don't want to sacrifice the long-term vision of, of, you know, I guess, blooding some young players and ensuring that we continue to develop our game plan and, and, and learn to implement that as best we can against some of our, our better oppositions that we come up against. But um, ultimately, we want to win the game. Um, so it's going to be a delicate balancing act for the match committee to, to not sacrifice that longer term vision, but at the same time try to ensure that we can win the game Friday night. I'm not going to answer any questions to do with betting. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> It's a two-horse race, so it's, a, it's an opportunity for us to, as I said, some of our players who haven't had the opportunity to play a huge amount this year to show their wares against the best team in the competition. And, um, you know, our guys are excited. They're excited to take on the challenge. It's another game of AFL football, probably an opportunity and something that some of these players would have absolutely loved at some point in their, in their youth, so they're able to do that this weekend. Well, I'm not sure how I'm going to pull up from tomorrow morning, so we'll see how we go for, for Friday. I'd love to be there Friday night, um, get down in the rooms pre-game and, and at half-time to, to get the guys uh, in a frame of mind that hopefully can, can win the game of football. Um, what that means for two weeks' time against the Bulldogs, I'm not sure. Uh, I guess it's, a, it's important to, to rest and recover from, from what I have tomorrow morning, um, but at the same time, I, I want to be there for my teammates. Uh, look, I, I don't necessarily think that there's any more importance on a particular game for individuals. Uh, every game of uh, for footy is important um, for a whole variety of stakeholders. So Friday night presents another opportunity for all those guys that get to pull on our jumper and run out there, uh, hopefully in front of a full house. Um, I guess specifically there might be some individual moments in the games where guys, um, you know, I guess would like to, to really take the, the game by the scruff of the neck, but probably no more, more so than usual. Yeah, really confident um, that those players will be well rested in, in the off season and um, get the work they need to be done whether it's surgery or, or, or that rest um, but really confident in the club's approach from a medical perspective and a sports science perspective to manage uh, that group of players as well as make sure we get enough volume in. Uh, it's a delicate balance between training really hard and making sure that we're rock hard fit for the season but at the same time um, managing the guys that are a bit more senior and have had um, a, lot of, a lot of football and a lot of pre-seasons under their belt, but absolutely confident that, uh, that that'll be managed really well. well. I'm not sure if it's many more than other clubs. Um, there might be four or five of us around that you know, 30 to uh, 31 bracket, but the vast majority of our players are still in their first to third year. So, um, you know, to be frank, it's that middle pack that we've been missing for quite some time. Um, and we've been reliant on our younger players and our senior players to carry the load. Um, and at some point this year, that was always going to you know, have, uh, have some type of telling effect on how we went. Um, by virtue of us suffering injuries, that sort of compounded that even more. Um, absolutely confident that our recruiting guys will look to target that age bracket, but really confident at the same time that both the older players and our younger players can stay up, stay up around that top form for many years to come. So, so, so just to, just on that, there's there's only three players that will be beyond 30 next year, likely on our list. And uh, our list management has meant that we've introduced a lot of young players over the last three years, and and some of them are getting some pretty valuable game time this year. So it's just the three. I, I hate that question. I'm going to answer it because it, you know I get asked that every year, regardless of how well or how, how uh, challenging a year it's been, and it it 
it's not an easy question to answer individually. So I'll let uh, I'll let the scribes and and the club's best and fairest voting sort of take care of themselves, and people can judge on that I, way. I have spoken um, to Harves and our sports science guys quite a number of times about um, what the split should be. Um, now this year was almost unmanageable given the fact that we had so many injuries throughout our midfield. Um, I needed to go in there for the team's sake and was happy to do so. Um, but I guess going forward, um, we're going to have to review that. I don't think so. Most of the injuries have been collision type of injuries, not necessarily fatigue related. So uh, I don't think it's been a, an enormous impact on what we've suffered. But I think you need to take a holistic approach when you review that with the whole AFL and, and see what have, has been fatigue injuries or overuse injuries and whether or not the travel has uh, an element of effect in that as well.